everyone. Thank you for coming. Uh, my name is Shlomi Noach. I'm with the database infrastructure um, uh, team at GitHub. Uh, we're here to talk about orchestrator on Raft, internals, benefits, and considerations, and if time allows best places in Brussels to eat croquette. Um, so I work at GitHub. I, work, I, I author a bunch of uh, open source projects, orchestrator, Go, Freno, SQL, and others. Uh, we're going to talk about orchestrator and our choice to use Raft as the uh, underlying um, well, as the underlying um, consensus or high availability solution. So uh, I'm going to give a brief overview of what Raft is, what Orchestrator is, why we chose to run Orchestrator on Raft, and what are the good, the good things, the benefits that we got uh, as a result. Uh, I'll illustrate a couple of flows, interesting flows. And then uh, as time allows considerations to anyone who's thinking to, uh, to use Raft to implement their own uh, application. Uh, so what is Raft? Raft is a distributed consensus algorithm. Um, multiple distributed services on hopefully different boxes uh, are trying to collaborate. And uh, how do they collaborate? First and foremost, by electing a leader. So with a Raft group, there is always one single leader. That's the premise of Raft. There, there can never be two leaders. Maybe there's no leader because there's a network problem, but at most one. And uh, Raft is quorum-based. The leader is guaranteed to see a quorum or the majority of the servers. So if you have three servers, the leader must be in a group of at least two. If we have five servers, the leader is, uh, uh, is part of a group of at least three, etc. cetera. And um, in a Raft group, all nodes communicate to each other. They're all saying, hi, what's up? I am in this position, I'm in that position. They all advertise themselves to each other. And they each keep a replication log. So this is the MySQL in DevRoom. So I'll, I'll, I'll use some uh, MySQL terminology. You can just think of it like the binary log. Only uh, the biggest difference is that it is guaranteed to be in order without uh, you know, without missing GDIDs, for example, or something. It's in increasing index, like the events that are being sent on top of Raft are indexed one, two, three, four, five. It can jump to 10. It's just increasing. And the leader is always guaranteed to have the top index. Maybe others have that index, but it certainly can't have a lower index than anyone else. That's actually how the nodes choose a leader. If someone has a higher index, then I cannot be the leader because I'm not as up-to-date as that server. Um, I don't know if uh, eventual consistent is the right term here because it's a bit overloaded. Um, Raft basically guarantees delivery of event. It doesn't necessarily require us to apply those events. So if the leader advertises, hey, this is a new event, I want to do that, I'm doing that, what it gets is an acknowledgement from a quorum of the group, maybe just the majority, maybe everyone is alive and happy, but all the leader knows is that everyone received the message. And uh, you can hook into it, but the basic is just the delivery. It doesn't guarantee that this and this and this and this servers are happy to apply the message. That's a different, uh, different concern. Um, last is that uh, replication log grows forever. The nodes are uh, assumed to be stateless, right? The application can go down. It is assumed to be stateless. When it comes back up, it reads this, this replication log, which is persisted. And then it reapplies all those events to come up as, a, uh, uh, as an up-to-date server. And... Um, the problem is that this log grows forever, infinitely, and we don't like infinite things. So we get periodic snapshots or like full backups, right? So periodically, the node will run a full backup. And when a node starts up, it checks to see, do I have some backup? Yes? Oh, OK, I'll do a full load. And then do I have any replication log continuing that backup? So it will do an incremental restore. If it doesn't have a snapshot or log, 
it can get them from other nodes in the group. So it will try locally, but others can give it the snapshot and the replication log that it requires. Um, I'm using uh, HashiCorp Raft. Uh, that's the engine behind console. Uh, when, when I started using it, it was uh, before what is now the 1.0. There's been a major uh, design change to the HashiCorp Raft library. Uh, I'm not using that, so I'm using an earlier version. It's an open source uh, uh, library and available on GitHub. What's Orchestrator? Orchestrator is a high availability and replication topology management solution. So it helps us um, observe and discover our MySQL topologies, replication topologies. It allows us to refactor stuff, like move replicas around. And most importantly uh, for this discussion is that it supports failovers. So it maintains the high availability of our servers. If a master dies or an intermediate, intermediate master dies, orchestrator will fail over and fix the topology and uh, get us back uh, live. And uh, orchestrator is open source. I started developing orchestrator like four years ago at a company called Outbrain and then at booking.com and now at GitHub. Uh, it's free and open source Apache 2, and we uh, continuously uh, develop, develop orchestrator. And um, I guess the premise to this discussion is that orchestrator manages the high availability of our MySQL topologies. So we also want orchestrator itself to be highly available. Um, because if it's down, it can't fail over our topologies. And until recently, the high availability of orchestrator was based in itself on MySQL service. How do I mean? So orchestrator is an app that uses a relational backend uh, store. So it used to use MySQL as its own uh, backend server. And multiple orchestrator services would coordinate between themselves to be highly available based on the high availability of the underlying MySQL uh, setup. So for example, you would set up a Galera cluster, Matthias uh, did so, and uh, you would have an orchestrator node for each uh, MySQL node in the Galera cluster, and high availability would be maintained by Galera. But um, we got two interesting incentives not to do that. So one incentive is uh, here, Dirkian is over here to blame. Uh, we have a use case where using a MySQL backend is undesired because of the overhead, because of the memory, because of some reasons that it's just too heavyweight for us to set up a MySQL as a backend for each orchestrator node or, or to even have two or three MySQL backends just for orchestrator. That, that was the first thing. The second was a challenge. Um, I had a discussion with our friend Kenny who challenged orchestrator and asked me, how does orchestrator mitigate data center face fencing? That is, a specific single DC goes dark, the network uh, is down. How does orchestrator know that this DC is down and not the other one, the one that uh, it cannot see? How does it mitigate fencing? These two incentives uh, drove us to, uh, to uh, develop orchestrator on Raft. And a lot of other good things happened. Um, I'll illustrate shortly how we deploy orchestrator how we run it at GitHub, but we get much better at cross DC availability, and we get uh, towards, it's work in progress, but towards being uh, Kubernetes friendly, which is also something that we're uh, keen on. An orchestra on, on Raft setup looks like this. So say we have three nodes um, of orchestrator. Each still runs its own dedicated database, but that database doesn't necessarily have to be MySQL, it can be, but it can also be SQLite. So I was, I was looking into various potential solutions to uh, an alternative to MySQL, and SQLite just made a lot of sense because it's, it's, it's stable, it's embeddable, it's lightweight, it's small, it really fit, fit our needs. But of course, uh, the SQL ends can, communi can communicate with each other. There's no replication mechanism to them, so orchestrator is providing the communication layer, and each orchestrator node has its own dedicated, private, completely isolated uh, relational backend. 
Each of these orchestrated nodes is independently monitoring our entire topology. So they're probing the MySQL service, how are you? Uh, what's your status? Who are your master? Who is your master? Who are your replicas, etc.? And any one of them is able to diagnose a problem, but only one of them, which is obviously the rough leader, is running failovers. So only one is taking act active uh, action upon upon uh, upon failure. And I'll, I'll illustrate shortly uh, a failover flow. Uh, how do we deploy orchestrator to GitHub? So we have orchestrator deployed on three different DCs. Right now we have a single orchestrator node in each DC. We have like two major DCs and one in the cloud. So th that makes three. It, it could change. Uh, it, it's not specific, explicit, specifically important. Uh, we have one orchestrator in each DC. We still use MySQL as a backend just because it's still running and we're good at MySQL, so, so we're happy to, to do that on github.com. We, re we, we implemented two interesting features. Uh, we patched the uh, HashiCorp RAF library to, to include two interesting features. So the HashiCorp RAF library, I spoke earlier about Raft in general, but different implementations support different feature sets. Um, the HashiCorp Raft library, um, is really, uh, it doesn't care about the identity of the nodes, right? So all nodes are created equal. Anyone can become a leader. You don't necessarily want to control who the leader is. And our case is a little bit different. I do want to be able to control the identity of the leader. For example, uh, we have the notion of the active data center, right? Uh, at, at this very moment, most our MySQL servers are all located in the same data center, right? And I would really like to have locality such that if DC2 is active, I want this orchestrator leader to be the active because operations would be much faster. If it needs to fail over, it can fail over local to the DC. Uh, so uh, that's number one. And number two is, um, so, so we implemented raft yield. Raft yield is, uh, is like assuming the cluster is healthy assuming Raft is happy and up and running. Hey everyone, would you please all yield to this server so, such that, that this orchestrator node could become the leader, if possible. And if not, okay, keep, keep the current leader, but I would really like that one to be pretty pleased. Uh, the other thing is the ability for a leader to step down. That's not supported in the HashiCorp library, and I'll illustrate the use case for that uh, shortly. Uh, another thing is that the HashiCorp library uh, comes with uh, one of two options, either LMDB or BoldDB as the persistent backup store, uh, 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 storage store for the replication log. And Orchestrator already comes with SQLite embedded, so it, it's a pity to use yet another uh, storage or uh, database. So uh, I re-implemented the uh, replication log on top of relational uh, SQLite. So whether Orchestrator uses SQLite or MySQL as a backend, there's an additional use of SQLite for persisting the replication uh, log. Okay, so far? I'd like to illustrate a high availability scenario. Uh, this is a real high availability scenario that, well, in testing while developing Orchestrator on Raft. So we have this single replication tree. We have this master. And um, Locality-wise, it turns out uh, we have three orchestrator nodes, 01, 02, 03, and 02 happens to be the leader, the rough leader, because I have this cron job that periodically says, yeah, pretty please, if possible, I want the leader to be local to, uh, to the masters. And the first thing I do is kill dash nine the master. Now, orchestrator is expected to run a failover. It knows how to do that. We, that's what it does. And all the nodes are probing all the servers. They all know that there is a failure scenario, but only O2 is the leader, and only O2 is about to take action because only the leader runs failovers. It's about to run the failover. It really wants to run the failover. But then I do a nasty thing, and I go to the backend database for this orchestrator node. I just drop the schema. I drop database orchestrator. It's a bit nasty, right? I, I, 
I just killed its own ability to communicate to its own backend store. What happens? So Orchestra immediately recognizes that something is going bad. It's unable to run self-health checks. Its own self-health checks uh, attempt to write like a heartbeat to its own backend database. It recognizes that it's unhealthy. Now, the Raft setup is completely healthy. There's nothing wrong with Raft. And that's where the ste uh, step down uh, is so important. It's the ability of the application to tell Raft, hey, I don't want to be the leader anymore, even though Raft itself is up and running. But I I'm feeling unwell. I want to step down. So it takes five seconds for orchestrator to step down. Meanwhile, the master is dead. We need to fail over that. Within five seconds, O2 freaks out, steps down, and the raft mechanism takes care of the rest and promotes one of the other orchestra nodes to be the leader. Let's say it's O1. O1 grabs leadership. It already knows the MySQL master is dead. It knew so from a few seconds ago, but it couldn't take action because it wasn't the leader. It is the leader now. It's running the failover. The failover takes place. Production is happy. At this time, we're, we're basically happy. But let's pursue this further. Failover took place. What happens to that node? 60 second la seconds later, it completely freaks out. It says, yeah, I'm not just unhealthy. I, I don't know what to do with myself. It bails out. It panics. The process dies. A few minutes later, Puppet kicks in. Puppet's job on this box is to make sure the orchestrator service is up and running. It kicks the service up. The service begins. It says, oh, I don't have a backend database. Let's create a new database. Let's create the tables. All right, now I'm up. Oh, hey, I'm configured to be a member in a Raft group. Hmm, do I have a snapshot? Yes, I do. Let's apply it. Do I have some replication log? Yes, I do. Let's apply that. Oh, wait, these are the members I should be speaking to. Hi, everyone. Could you please send me the rest of the replication log? Because I'm at index one, two, three, and I don't know what's, what's, what's next. And those, tie, those two servers let O2, uh, they give it the rest of the replication log. And then it joins the Raft group. But a few minutes later, something else happens. My cron job kicks in. It says, oh, the master is here. You know, I would really love this orchestrator now to be the leader. Are you healthy? Is everyone happy? Yes, we're all happy. Great, please become the leader. So we injected two errors, uh, and we got a very nice automation, which like, fixes the MySQL, fixes the orchestrator, and everything is up and running again. I'd like to illustrate another flow. Um, we have three DCs, DC1, DC2, DC3. Uh, let's agree that the master is in DC2 and the active orchestra node is in DC2. I'm going to network partition the data center. I didn't actually do that in production yet, maybe. Um, next time, next year. Um, so DC2 is the active data center where the orchestra leader is. What happens if we network isolate the entire data center? Let's see how it looks like uh, to this orchestrator node. In this orchestrator node's view, in this orchestrator node's view, the master is alive. There's a few replicas. They're running. And a bunch of other replicas in other data centers who are dead. But there's no need to fail over. The master is alive. Thankfully, this orchestrator node is similarly isolated from the rest of, the, uh, of, of its own nodes, just as MySQL is isolated from the rest of the replicas. It used to be the leader. It's no longer the leader. It's not part of the quorum. The Raft protocol will demote this server. Orchestrator will see that Raft says, you're not the leader anymore. Oh, I'm not the leader. Then I'm not calling the shots. I'm not going to decide whether we do failovers or not. I'm, I'm just going to sit by and do nothing. Meanwhile, what DC1 and DC3 see is that the master has died, a bunch of replicas have died. These are still alive. Orchestrator 2 is gone, but we are 2 out of 3. We have quarrel. We are up and running. We are able to provide. 
either DC1 or DC3, grab leadership. Let's say it's DC1. It fixes the topology. It runs the failover because we have concluded that DC2 was the one to have been network isolated as opposed to uh, any of the other DCs. And whatever happens later when DC2 comes back live is a matter, is a different matter. Production is happy at this time. Thank you. Um, uh, another nice thing, so we, we, part of this is work in progress. So we have console running in GitHub, but our, our use case is a bit special. So we have uh, console running on different DCs, and those console setups, they don't talk to each other. So every console is local to its own DC. Um, work in progress is that we're working on orchestrator console proxy uh, based failovers or based high availability, such that upon failover, orchestrator tells console, oh, hey, this is the new master for this cluster. And console, through console template, will update our proxies and change the, uh, provide the service discovery for the clients. Now, the consoles in the different DCs, they don't talk to each other. But the fact that orchestrator is deployed in each DC enables us to locally update each console in its own DC through the raft uh, mechanism. So that's nice. How am I with time? Uh, all right. Um, I'll just leave you with, the, the, there's a few considerations and we can take this offline outside if anyone wants to know. Just consider a few weird, uh, crazy scenarios. What happens, so eventual consistency is not your best friend, really. Uh, what happens if we have a failover from master A to master B? And then master B also fails and we fail over to master C. Now orchestra is up and running and everyone is happy. Sometime later, one of the orchestra nodes goes down just because and bootstraps is a, is a new empty one and it uh, rereads the snapshot. But the snapshot was taken long before A died. So anyone sees when I, where I'm getting it? It starts reapplying the logs and it says, oh, you know what? We just failed over to B. But wait, the actual situation is that everyone knows that C is the master. And here comes orchestra and says, oh no, we should have failed over to B. Let's update console. Let's tell everyone B is the master. So there are a few considerations to, to look into. Um, there's a few ways to mitigate that. Orchestrator heuristically uh, requests a snapshot shortly after failover, which is a lightweight operation, so why not? Uh, there could be other solutions to that. Um, if anyone else is further interested in understanding some of the considerations to using RAF, please uh, talk to me outside. Um, on the roadmap is using Kubernetes. One of the really nice things right now with Orchestrator is that it can run on SQLite. And I know some people are running Orchestrator on SQLite with the memory engine for SQLite. So SQLite doesn't even possess the data such that uh, on a Kubernetes setup, one of the Orchestrator nodes can go down, Kubernetes will figure this out, bootstrap a new pod that kicks in a new orchestrator node that is completely empty because it's out of the blue, and that orchestrator node is able to talk to the other nodes in the group, get a snapshot, get the replication log, and kick in, so that's, uh, that's very nice. And I'm happy to take questions. Thank you. I have time for questions, Fred? Yeah? Yes? Basically, on Exchanger, just only to the leader in action for the MySQL installer. But not guarantee the MySQL data consistency. Orchestrator guarantees the promotion of the best available replica out of the set of replicas. Replication guarantees the consistency if you use either semi-sync or GDID or whatever, being of service, then depending on how far ahead the replicas were, that's a little bit out, out of the control of orchestrator. It's more about the MySQL replication. Yes, sir? Are you running semi-sync or Are we running semi-sync? We're uh, looking into semi-sync right now, and I'll publish a blog post that uh, illustrates. Also, policy, like if uh, for any reason you have a replica that's unlike in behind, orchestrator needs to take action? Yeah, so ideally, uh, ideally, we would promote, the ideal is to promote the replica that is most up-to-date. There are various considerations to not doing that. 
But Orchestra is able to reparent replicas even in two steps to get the most out of the situation. Okay, the, it's a configuration variable. The question was what happens if the master dies and all of the replicas are really lagging. There's a configuration variable to say whether this is okay and you prefer to promote or you want to not promote and, and avoid losing data. Uh, last question, sir? So maybe a trivial question, but the clients, who do they talk to to understand who to talk to? Do they talk to the orchestrator? No, okay. Who, who do the, or, the clients talk to? No, Orchestra is in the back end. Uh, it's a big question. So either you would use like DNS-based uh, discovery and Orchestra would be the one to tell DNS, oh, hey, this is changed. But we're looking into everyone talking to a proxy and Orchestra would tell console, hey, the master is changed. Console would update the configuration or this, whatever the, the, the setup for the proxy and the proxy would kill the connections if still existing and redirect new connections to the new master. That's, that's what we're hoping to get to. Thank you so much.